Hello guys, I hope you guys are having a good day. Um, happy Wednesday. And today I'm going to make a video on basically doing desktop support. So for this video I'm going to talk about um, basically how you troubleshoot an issue on the phone when a client calls you. Like, oh, I'm having issues with my computer. A program, an application does not want to run. Or the, I open the application and it gives me an error message. So basically my next couple of videos are going to be about desktop support and dealing with desktop support and basically you know um, basically a, well you, you should know in desktop support role and these this video is going to educate users that are trying to get into that role or trying to get to that job or have a plus certification and you know they probably have the license or certification but they don't have the skill set to actually do the desktop support role so I'm going to educate users on common things that you should know if you're going for a desktop support job. And that will be my next couple of videos for the next couple of days. And after that, I'll probably focus on PC technician and then focus on system admin after that. All right. So this video, I'm racing this. I had to race something. This video, I'm going to talk about programs that we use to assess users so I'm going to talk about this program it's a uh, uh, Kessen ya I can't, I can't pronounce it and basically this program gives you the access to the remote control on the person's computer and you're able to see what's what's uh, what's going on in their computer and you're able to basically troubleshoot the issue remotely and basically have access to the person's computer a customer calls you you have an issue they download the program and then you're able to remotely log into their computer and you're able to see what's going on on their on their end and then we have another one it's called go to assist this is the one I use at my job we use in the finance I work in the financial in the financial industry with uh, with financial people so basically I use go to assist me and uh, they show me their screen. I'm able to, they able to share the screen with me, and I'm able to see what's going on on their screen. And they show me the error message. If they're using a program or an application, for example, Excel or Word or Outlook. They show me the error message, and then I tell them, "Oh, okay, so that's the error message. Oh, okay, thanks for showing me. Um, let me see what's going on with your with your computer." And I just start messing with their computer a little bit. I tell them I'm gonna um, touch your computer for a bit. You know. You're obviously not just gonna move the mouse and start working. You know, you have to tell the customer ahead of time. You know, uh, download the program. Now I'm gonna remotely log into your computer. Now I'm gonna look at the problem or show me the problem. Show me what happened. You start asking questions to the customer. So, and then there's another one called Team Viewer, and that allows you to do a remote session as well. So, now that you do the remote session, you ask questions to the customer. You ask them. When was the last time this program worked? Um, when was the last time the program worked? What error message do you get? Can you show me the error message? Can you, can you, can you replicate the issue so I can see what's going on? Um, when was the last time you restarted your computer? Because some people don't restart. Like if you're working for a, a like when they're if you're working for a financial sh sector, or you're working for a certain company, they don't restart their computer. So when was the last time you restarted your computer? So. You know, one of the one of the the issues is they don't restart their computer. That you have to make them restart their computer, and that usually solves the problem. And that's like one of the things that fixes it. But some people have issues with Outlook. You know, um, might be an error message. It might be because there's a there might be because uh, there's a missing file in Outlook or something like that. So we want to narrow down the problems that they're having with their computer. So in order to do that we're gonna to go to something called Event Viewer and Event Viewer allows you to see problems and overall summary of basically the whole machine so in Event Viewer you could go to Windows you can see your the application if you try to run an application and it gives them an error message you will go to Event Viewer and check the application log you will check the security log if they're trying to run the program and they don't have admin rights you will check the security tab if you see something set up when the computer first turns on, then you know there's something going on here. You get an error message when the computer first turns on, blah, 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 missing missing file or cannot connect to the drive or blah, 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 something missing. You would check the setup. Uh, you would check system. 
get an error message on the system, check the system. Then there's applications for scripting. Then there's hardware events. Then there's if you have issues with Internet Explorer crashing or something like that, you would check Internet Explorer. Then Media Center, if you have music, you're playing music. Then Microsoft Office Alerts, and then Windows PowerShell, and so forth and so forth. So this is how you would check the error messages that they're getting. So this is just programs and applications. It was like Kevin, Kevin, um, I have a user with um, issues with their password. They can't log into the computer because it's logged into a domain. I'm gonna go over that in another video. Um, Kevin, uh, the user, the user is trying to print. They, they, they have a printer and they're trying to print. The printer was working yesterday and today is not working. So, you know, you, you would check uh, devices and printers. You would check and make sure the printer is added. If the printer is added and it's grayed out, you know something's going on. That means the printer is either, the printer is probably off. It's probably not on. So check the printer is on. And then if it's, if it's something, con if it's an issue with the, with the, the network, you won't get a white or a, a, like a grayed out printer. You will get a, a printer with a, the yellow, yellow exclamation point on it. And that means that there's an issue with it. It's, it would say needs troubleshooting. And you will right click on it and then you will troubleshoot the issue. And then usually when you troubleshoot the issue, it will tell you if it's a network issue. If something's wrong with the network, it, says, it probably says the printer is not connected or the printer is not um, printer's not connected. Um, there's no IP address for the printer, and then, and then and you you will also check the command line. If you have an IP address for the printer, um, you would check the command line on the you you would call the, you would talk to the user, tell them open up CMD, and then ask him to ping whatever IP address it is. So I'll ping 8.8.8.8. .8 That's Google. You will ping 8.8.8.8, and that, that means Google's working. And then ask them if they have an, if they're having issues with their internet, if they're having issues with their computer, their internet is not working. Ask them if the computer is plugged in. If it's not plugged in, I, I mean, if it's plugged in, then you know there's something wrong with it. Maybe maybe it needs a new IP address. You check IP config, and the IP the IP needs to be released or flushed. You gotta flush DNS. You know, you, you tell them to flush DNS. You tell them to release the IP address and create another IP address. You check their network. On the right bottom, on the bottom right hand side, on Windows 7, on, on Windows 8 or Windows 10, there should be a picture of a PC connected, plugged in. You know that it's connected or not. If it's not connected, it'll be an X mark. If there's an issue with the network, it'll be an exclamation point with, with a yellow triangle. So you troubleshoot the issue. You figure out what the issue is. You tell them what the issue is. You try to make it as simple as possible. Don't make it complicated. And basically, you just troubleshoot over the phone. Or you do a remote session and and whatever issues they have you figure it out and if you can't figure it out you put you if you're on the phone with them you put them on hold you ask your, you ask your colleague you ask your supervisor to help you you ask someone to help you There's people always willing to help depending on the environment you're in most times everyone's willing to help so you basically do that and you take care of the issue you take care of the problem the customer is happy that you're happy everyone's happy so and that's how you will handle the situation if someone's giving you a call and they're asking, they're having an issue with a program, an application, or they're having an issue with a printer, or they're having an issue with an application, a software, or something that they're trying to open. And um, I'll show you one more thing. If they're trying to run a program as an admin and they don't have admin rights, you will go to the program, you right click run as administrator, and it will prompt you for your password, not the user's password, your password. And if that doesn't work, you hold the shift key and you right click and you run as a different user and it will be logged into the domain. You put in your password, your credentials, and then you're able to you're able to log in you're able to log in as yourself without actually logging out the user and you're able to run the application after that. And they, and they shouldn't you shouldn't have to boot the user out of their, their computer. Just log in as a different user on the actual program, the actual application, and then you should be able to run it. And you should be good after that. So, well, that concludes my video. And this is my first video on desktop support. I hope you guys have a good day. Rate, comment, subscribe as always. I'm sorry for not making videos. I've been very, very busy. So, the videos will keep on coming. You guys have a good one, all right? Take care. Happy Wednesday. Bye.